Right now, Laurie, there, you can probably see a cloud of dust behind me. That is the dust kicked up by the fire chase vehicle, which has just headed out to its position. That usually means we're around two or three minutes away from a run. And thrust, driven by Andy Green, hopes to reach a speed of something like 700 miles per hour on this first run. Now, what they have to do then, obviously, is six miles up uh, the desert in that direction. They have to turn it around within the hour, get it back at a similar speed. If they manage to do that, that will smash the land speed record, which has been held for 14 years by Richard Noble, who, as you know from our live coverage, is the man who is masterminding this current project. So any minute now, we expect down to my left the car to start up, and uh, then we hope it will come straight past us at around 700 miles per hour, as I say. They'll try to turn it around, send it back, and break that land speed record. Now, of course, we had this terrific run yesterday, didn't we? The second run, not within the hour's uh, time limit, but of 687 miles an hour, can you just remind us why they didn't actually turn the car around and make that run within the one hour, which would have beaten the record? Well, they had a couple of technical problems that they wanted to take a look at, and they were just simply slipped out of the time slot, basically. So uh, they decided that to, rather than risk it yesterday, they would start uh, afresh today, which we believe they are doing now. In fact, the run is underway. We're going to pan around now. Mick Dean, our cameraman, panning around to the... Uh, far south end of the desert that's about six miles from us you should be able to see the cloud of dust now that is thrust ssc building up he'll now be at full power probably kicking in the afterburners now around 400 miles per hour picking up to 500 here he comes now towards the crucial mile marker this is where he wants to hit 700 he's in the mile marker his speed over that mile is being measured now it looks good it looks fast and it looks smooth. He's out of the mile marker. He will now be using the braking systems. First of all, a parachute comes out. Uh, that takes him down from about 550 miles an hour to around 150. Then he will be braking a pretty much conventional brakes, hoping to stop down there. Everybody looks fairly pleased. Not quite the cheers we heard yesterday. I don't know if that signifies that maybe it wasn't as fast as they would have liked. Uh, but certainly it was a smooth run. It looks successful. We now have to wait and see whether what the speed is. Now, right behind me here, you can probably make out the trucks here. That is the United States Automobile Club and the FIA, the International Automobile Federation. They are the official timekeepers. They will tell us, hopefully within the next few minutes, what speed that was. If it was uh, a record-breaking speed, then the team will now be bringing the car to a halt up there. They'll be making sure it's safe first. They will then move in, check out all the data. If everything is OK, Andy Green should head back down this way uh, if within one hour. So we would hope sometime before 10 past 9 London time and hopefully break that land speed record. We'll bring you the speed of this run as soon as we hear it. And on that return run, if it's within the hour, Jonathan, he might really put his foot down and go for Mach 1, speed of sound, 750. I don't think that is actually very likely, Laurie. The problem with uh, this is that safety is always the number one concern. And as they build up towards their ultimate aim, which, as you say, is to break the speed of sound, then they will have to do it very slowly because all the safety systems have to check out. So it, he would likely come back at around the same speed he went up the desert at this time. And then over the next week, they would build towards the supersonic barrier, the speed of sound. Uh, that is because the safety systems, as I say, have to be checked out. And Andy Green, the driver, was actually telling us yesterday that what they will probably do as they head towards those very, very high speeds and the sound barrier, they will probably throttle back a bit and do a couple of actually slower runs to test out some of the, some of the more sophisticated safety systems that kick in when he's approaching the speed of sound so we're probably a week or two away yet but you you won't see the speed of sound today you may well see a new land speed record live on sky jonathan we shall join you on that second run thank you very much jonathan what was the time on that last run very very quick indeed laurie 693 miles per hour that is the fastest speed yet achieved by any car in history beating by six miles what andy green did here in the desert just yesterday when he reached 687. let's take a look at the run now if we can he starts off very slowly the 0 to 70 bit then accelerates very very quickly picking up 25 miles per hour per second as he puts on the afterburners. Coming through the measured mile, which is the important bit, uh, the USAC, that's the United States Automobile Club, times him and the FIA, the 
International Automobile Federation, timed at 693 miles per hour. Now, there is, though, one slight problem. Um, as he went through the measured mile, one of the computers aborted the run. He'd already hit that high speed, so that's not a problem. That is official. But one of the computers then aborted the run for what reason, we don't know yet. Now, so the uh, design team is this uh, in this direction in the desert, around six miles up there at the stop point. They're all around the car now. They'll be checking out all the data. If that computer problem is serious, the land speed record could be off. It may, though, be a very simple problem, in which case there is still a chance they will turn it around within the hour and send it back down the desert at a similar speed and break that 14-year-old land speed record. It will be live on Sky, of 693, course. absolutely incredible. Any reaction from the rival American camp and Craig Breedlove? Not as yet. I should think they're sitting... They are the spirit of America. I think they're the dispirited of America right now. Um, they've only hit a top speed of around 380. Uh, some serious problems with their car. We don't expect them to be out on the desert, really, for at least a couple of days. They've got a lot of problems to sort out. Uh, clearly well behind in this race, but it could go on for several weeks yet. They could come back out in two weeks' time, break whatever record Andy Green set, so it's not over. OK, Jonathan, we'll stay in touch. Thanks very much indeed. Jonathan, what's happening? Well, it slipped outside that one hour, I'm afraid, Laurie. The, for the moment, the land speed record stays with Richard Noble. 14-year-old record of 633 miles per hour. Right now, they have slipped outside. The problem was that at the end of the first run, they had a computer failure. That aborted the run after it had gone through at 693 miles per hour. It's taking them longer than they thought to fix that, so the land speed record is off for the moment. Let's take a quick look, though, at that first very successful run anyway. Uh, the car the car builds up, as we've said before, very slowly from 0 to 70, about 20 seconds. Then full power, then the afterburners. 300 miles per hour to 550 in 11 and a half seconds. Through the mile marker, which is just behind us, right in front of our cameras here, at 693 miles per hour it was measured at that point. Then the parachute comes out. That brings the speed down from around 550 to 150. Then Andy Green uses pretty much a basic braking system to bring it to a halt. But at that point, the computer, as I say, had already aborted the run. There is a problem, we think, with the software. They're working on that now. Now, it doesn't mean the land speed record is lost for today, of course. They could, if they can fix this computer problem, send Thrust SSC back down the desert here at 693 miles per hour again, and then if they can turn it around down at that end of the desert and send it back, they could still get the record today. But right now, bad news, they have a problem. They are working on it, but right now, the record isn't going to be broken in the next few minutes. But it clearly has the potential to break it, doesn't it? It has the potential not just to break it, but to absolutely shatter this record and go well beyond that as well. Or clearly, 693 is 60 miles per hour more than Richard Noble's average speed when he broke the record. This car, they say, is capable of going even faster than that. They want to break the sound barrier. They want to go supersonic on the ground. To do that, they would have to hit something like 750 miles per hour. It's all dependent on ground temperatures as well. That's why it's around that figure, not specifically that. Um, that is obviously a couple of weeks away, maybe one week, but uh, probably more like two, because they have to build up incrementally very slowly. But they're very confident that this car, w within, the, within perhaps this afternoon here in Nevada, perhaps tomorrow, will shatter the land speed record and will go on to become the, fast the first car to break the sound barrier. And I know you're going to stick with it. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed. Right, let's... But a computer problem meant that, meant that the team was unable to complete the second run within an hour. That means the record doesn't stand. This is how Sky's Jonathan Hunt saw the first run. You should be able to see the cloud of dust now. That is thrust SSC building up. He'll now be at full power, probably kicking in the afterburners now, around 400 miles per hour, picking up to 500. Here he comes now towards the crucial mile marker. This is where he wants to hit 700. He's in the mile marker. His speed over that mile is being measured now. It looks good, it looks fast, and it looks smooth. He's out of the mile marker. He will now be using the braking systems. First of all, a parachute comes out. Uh, that takes him down from about 550 miles an hour to around 150. Then he will be braking uh, pretty much conventional brakes, hoping to stop down there team hitting 693 miles per hour today.
They completed their first run just after 8 o'clock, achieving a speed of 693 miles per hour, the fastest a car has ever gone. But a computer fault means that they couldn't make a second run, which is absolutely essential to establish a new record. 0 to 70 in a sedate 20 seconds, then full power and afterburners as the car reaches 300 miles per hour, then to 550 in 11 and a half seconds, and thrust goes through the crucial mile marker at record-shattering speed. This was the fastest run yet. The time, the speed for the mile are 693.507 miles an hour. So with a first run of 693 miles per hour, the record attempt is on. Now it's up to the engineers to turn the car around and send it back down this desert at a similar speed within one hour. But as the support vehicles readied themselves for a second run, the design We've team reported a problem. Because it appears that computer one has shut down and has actually aborted the run. So if that is what has happened, then the tail of the car would have been pushed up into the safety position, the two engines would have been shut down, and the car would have been brought to a halt. And as the one-hour time limit passed, there was no sign of thrust. The land speed record remains unbroken. Jonathan Hunt, Sky News in the Black Rock Desert, Nevada. And we'll be going live to Nevada and Jonathan for the next run, which we're expecting very shortly, actually, within the next hour. The jet-powered car actually touched 719 miles an hour over a measured mile, but still the record eludes the thrust team. The car tends to start very slowly, 0 to 70, in a fairly sedate 20 seconds. Uh, at 70 miles per hour, Andy Green hits full power. He then takes the car up to around 200 miles per hour. That's when he kicks in the afterburners. The afterburners then start increasing its speed by 25 miles per hour per second. He goes from 300 miles per hour to 550 miles per hour in roughly 11 and a half seconds. Then he steps it up. He's looking for a speed of around 700 again here. He's heading towards the mile marker now. It looks very fast indeed. He's coming into the mile marker. This is where his speed will be measured right now as he goes through that mile marker. He's through to the end of the mile marker. The that figure again was 700, there you are, 719 miles per hour. But we're just getting news from the Nevada desert that there won't be another run tonight. The parachutes used to slow the car down failed. Andy Green, the driver, had to use conventional brakes. They were damaged trying to bring the car to a halt. So the second and decisive run tonight has been cancelled. Hello, Viv. Let's just pan the cameras round straight away. This uh, latest attempt at the land speed record is already underway. You can see in the far distance now, uh, there's maybe a few people in the way of our camera shot right now, but in the far distance, thrust is beginning to build up speed. It goes, as we've said before, from 0 to 70 in a relatively sedate 20 seconds. Andy Green then puts on full power up to 200 miles per hour. Then he's increasing speed with the afterburners at around 25 miles per hour per second. That is the dust cloud you can see now. This run is underway. He's looking for a speed of around 680 miles per hour. He'll then turn around, hopefully come back within the hour, and finally, we hope, break this record. He's coming into the mile marker now. This is the crucial part. This is where his speed will be measured by the vans you can see right in front of us. He's through the mile marker now. This is where he now begins to break. First of all, it's a parachute system, double parachutes. Those failed on his last run. Hopefully they are working today. We can't tell from this distance. He'll then be braking from around 150 miles per hour with relatively conventional brakes. So obviously a successful run there so far. But now what we have to wait for, as we've waited for so often before, is to see whether the systems are all in place, everything is working, all the data checks out, and if the team finally can manage to turn this car around within the hour, send it back down the desert this way, and hopefully, we hope, finally, break that 14-year-old land speed record of 633 miles per hour. We had a superb shot of that, Jonathan, probably the, the best shot we've had all week uh, of the car itself, of the vehicle itself. Um, any idea from just looking whether it, whether it was a decent run? 
Uh, looked like a very good run. Clearly it was quick, and this car has shown uh, several times already that it is far more than capable of breaking this record. So that would certainly, I think, have been uh, the necessary speed to break the record. As, as we've said before, they need two runs with an aggregate speed of 640 miles per hour. That's because they need to be 1% over the current record of 633. That certainly looked as though it was uh, the necessary speed, I would say. The point is now whether they can turn it around in the hour. That's what they've had problems with before computer failures parachute braking failures hopefully there are no problems this time we'll find out in a few minutes exactly what that speed was i would say from uh, our experience of watching the cargo pass that it was certainly above record breaking speed and that threatening weather we'd heard about jonathan that's gone away has it well, it blew in a little bit. We did have some showers here this morning, but the desert dries out very quickly. The winds dropped again. Now, we do have Hurricane Nora battering sort of Southern California, and that is pushing some bad weather up here. Uh, but it seems to have abated for the moment, at least, and certainly there is no bad weather around right now, so that looks as though it will hold for the hour if they can turn this car around. We've got every single finger crossed, Jonathan, that we'll be back to you within an hour. Thanks a lot. Viv, 700 miles per hour through the measured mile. That, as you know by now, is the critical point. It's directly behind me here. The official timekeepers are in those vans, which you can see right behind us. Uh, they are the ones who sanction any record. Uh, 700 miles per hour, clearly more than enough to break this record if they can turn the car around six miles away up that end of the desert and bring it back down here at a similar speed. 700 miles per hour, very pleased with that, the team here. Obviously slower than the 719 that we have seen thrust do, but they're easing off slightly in the hope that they can turn the car around with the hour, avoid any problems, and finally get this record. It certainly looks on today if we have no re problems reported with the car up that end of the desert, and as yet, there are no problems being reported. Well, as I said before, Jonathan, fingers crossed. See you later. <laughs> That is the dust cloud you can see now. This run is underway. He's looking for a speed of around 680 miles per hour. He'll then turn around, hopefully come back within the hour, and finally, we hope, break this record. He's coming into the mile marker now. This is the crucial part. This is where his speed will be measured by the vans you can see right in front of us. He's through the mile marker now. This is where he now begins to break. First of all, it's a parachute system, double parachutes. Those failed on his last run. Hopefully they are working today. We can't tell from this distance. He'll then be braking from around 150 miles per hour with relatively conventional brakes. So obviously a successful run there so far. But now what we have to wait for, as we've waited for so often before, is to see whether the systems are all in place, everything is working, all the data checks out, and if the team finally can manage to turn this car around within the hour, send it back down the desert this way, and hopefully, we hope, finally, break that 14-year-old land speed record of 633 miles per hour. And Thrust is due to make its second run to confirm the new record within the next half hour. The Do you think it will happen? The suspense <laughs> is killing, isn't it? I'm sure they will get it eventually. And our correspondent Jonathan Hunt watched it happen just a few minutes ago. Thrust SSC's bid for the land speed record now underway. Andy Green putting on the afterburners, increasing speed 25 miles per hour per second. This is the critical one. He's within the hour time limit. This could be the land speed record. He's now going into the crucial mile marker, clearly traveling at enough speed to break that record. He's through the mile marker. He is now throttling back. Braking systems coming into play. The thrust team whooping and hollering with joy. They clearly feel that they have broken the world land speed record after so many attempts. Now we just have to wait several minutes for the official time to come through. But clearly it looks right now as if Thrust SSC finally, after all the problems, after all the waiting, it looks as though Thrust has broken the world land speed record. It stands currently at 633 miles per hour, a record held for 14 years by Richard Noble, the man masterminding this project. But uh, Thrust, we have already seen once go through here at 700 miles per hour. It looks as though it's gone back at a similar speed. Clearly, that would shatter the record. We now await the official time. Now back to you in the studio. And in fact, Jonathan is now standing by for us live. 714 miles per hour. I mean, Laurie's much better than me at sums. He makes it that they've broken it by 81 miles per hour, Jonathan. So they did it in style in the end.
They did it in great style in the end. 700 miles per hour on that first run that we saw live on Sky. 728 miles per hour on this second run, which you've just watched. That gives them an average through the two runs of 714, shattering the current land speed record. They've waited longer than they wanted to. They've had computer problems. They've had parachute problems, the braking parachutes. But now, as you say, they have shattered the land speed record in some style. And what happens next? Well, next they, uh, they keep going. I think they probably have a party tonight uh, to celebrate. But next they go for what is their bigger ambition, which is to break the sound barrier, to be the first car to travel uh, faster than the speed of sound. That'll be, depending on the temperature, around 750 miles per hour. Now, considering they went 728 miles per hour today, it's probably not that far away for them to go through Mach 1. They consider that even more historic than the land speed record. So it'll be a party tonight and then back to business tomorrow. And uh, whatever happened to the Americans, dare I ask? <laughs> well, the Americans are still here in the desert. They've uh, struggled to get even above 400 miles per hour so far. Craig Breedlove, in the spirit of America, has had a lot of problems with the car. He's had a lot of engine problems. They're still working on those. Now, don't forget, though, that this is not the end of it, that uh, Craig Breedlove could sit here in the desert, sort out his problems, and provided the weather doesn't turn against him, could come out in a couple of weeks' time and break Andy Green's new world land speed record. I think the thrust team, though, believe that in the car that Craig Breedlove has, that is unlikely. It doesn't appear to be too stable. It appears to have too many problems. So it looks as though the world land speed record stays with Britain and stays with Britain for some time to come. Jonathan, thanks very much. <laughs> record breakers thrust SSC yet a new mark in the desert. Deborah Parry collapses after hearing her death sentence on the radio. And the thousand pound fine for parents who can't control their children. Sky News on the hour with Vivian Creeper. Good evening. Within the last hour, Britain's thrust SSC team has broken the world land speed record in Nevada. Our US correspondent Jonathan Hunt watched the run at the Black Rock Desert. Thrust SSC's bid for the land speed record now underway. Andy Green putting on the afterburners, increasing speed 25 miles per hour per second. This is the critical one. He's within the hour time limit. This could be the land speed record. He's now going into the crucial mile marker, clearly traveling at enough speed to break that record. He's through the mile marker. He is now throttling back. Braking systems coming into play. The thrust team whooping and hollering with joy. They clearly feel that they have broken the world land speed record after so many attempts. And Thrust SSC has broken the world land speed record. That second run recorded at 728 miles per hour. That gives them an average on the two runs of 714 miles per hour, breaking the current land speed record by 81 miles per hour. That record had been held for 14 years by Richard Noble, the man who's masterminded this Thrust SSC project. But Andy Green is now the new world land speed record holder, his speed 714 miles per hour. And that was just half an hour ago. And just one main story this hour on Sky News. Britain's thrust SSC team has broken the world land speed record in Nevada. Tornado pilot Andy Green completed two runs in his jet-powered car within the hour permitted. The first run was timed at 700 miles per hour, the second at 728 miles per hour, and the average of that set a new record of 714 miles per hour. News from America via CBS next. The news headlines this Friday morning. The British jet-powered car Thrust has shattered the world land speed record in Nevada. It clocked 714 miles an hour, 80 more than the old record. The Queen and the Prime Minister have sent their congratulations. Good morning and welcome to the BBC's Breakfast News. Good morning, the main stories. The Queen and the Prime Minister have sent messages of congratulation to the British team in the Nevada desert, who last night broke the world land speed record. 
The jet-powered thrust vehicle driven by RAF Tornado pilot Andy Green managed an average of 714 miles an hour. That's 80 miles an hour more than the old record. There's been an earthquake overnight in central Italy. There are unconfirmed reports that two people have been killed. And the Foreign Secretary says the government is encouraging negotiations which could result in blood money being paid to the family of the Australian nurse murdered in Saudi Arabia. Also in the next hour, as William Hague celebrates 100 days as leader of the party, a senior Conservative says his plans to reform the party could create a Stalinist situation. And on a mission to Mir, the space shuttle Atlantis blasted off a few Booster hours ago. And liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis, extending America's presence in space. And David Brain is here with this morning's weather. Thank you, Liz. Good morning to you. Nothing really changing. The weather pattern very static at the moment across the British Isles. I think at the weekend forecast, much of the same. A bit of morning mist and fog to contend with. But eventually the sun poking through fine and dry here. A bit more cloud in the far north and the breeze freshening here as well. And that's the forecast. The British supersonic car thrust SSC has smashed the world land speed record. Members of the team are celebrating in the Nevada desert after powering their way into the record books at a speed of 714.1 miles an hour. The Queen described their achievement as a source of great pride for the nation. The Prime Ministers also sent a message of congratulation. Two minutes to run. The British team manager, Richard Noble, has spent the last nine years working for this moment. The dust cloud six miles away from our vantage point means RAF fighter pilot Andy Green has switched on thrust SSC's engine. Seconds later, the dust cloud advances, whipped up by the power of two Rolls-Royce jet engines near full throttle. At this stage, Andy Green is gently accelerating to six, then over 700 miles an hour. The noise in the cockpit is deafening. Every tiny vibration the car experiences is shared by its driver. The aim is to reach the intended top speed along a special one-mile section of the desert track where the time will be recorded. As thrust SSC cuts across this dry, barren lake bed, expectations are high, and Andy Green didn't disappoint. Finally, the world land speed record that stood for 14 years has not only been broken, but crushed. And the average for the mile, 714.144 Drive as fast as you want on this surface. Well, as fast as we uh, felt <laughs> safe to go. Andy, you've been very calm and professional throughout this. Are you just a little bit excited for once? <laughs> of course I'm excited. <laughs> how excited? You can see how excited. We're all absolutely oh, delighted. <laughs> not very excited. <laughs> Andy Green's success is now being shared by the hundreds of people back in the UK who worked on the development of what is the most advanced and now the fastest road vehicle ever built. My company's actually made the stub axles and the hubs themselves which the wheels are actually mounted to to rotate. So it's all the sharp end of automotive uh, products that we've done for the project. Um, if you, the wheels wouldn't turn without our parts on them and the brakes wouldn't be able to stop anything because there'd be nothing turning around to be able to stop. So the, the boys back in England will be very proud of today. The British team hope the record this car's achieved won't last long. They want to gradually increase it over the next couple of weeks until it reaches the sound barrier of well over 750 miles an hour. Once achieved, it's a record that will stand for some time to come. Clive Myrie, BBC News, in the Nevada desert. Richard Noble and his team are a far cry from Britain's high-speed pioneers. Bluebird took Sir Malcolm Campbell into the record books at 301 miles an hour in 1935. 29 years later, as the record speed rose, Bluebird Proteus entered the race, driven by Sir Malcolm's son, Donald. In 1964, his car achieved 403 miles an hour and a permanent place in history. Its wheels were driven by its engine, unlike its many successors, which have been propelled by jet engines. Ten years later, with the record now standing at 600 miles an hour, Richard Noble began his love affair with speed in thrust.
By 1981, Thrust 2 was finished, but it was another two years before its driver became the fastest man in the world at a speed of 633 miles an hour. It seemed the fulfillment of a dream. Why did you do it in the first place? Ah, uh, well, I suppose for Britain and for the hell of it. <laughs> and what on earth are you going to do now? God knows. <laughs> I'm going to have a long rest. <laughs> But Richard Noble had always set his sights on the sound barrier, and Thrust SSC was designed to break it. The new record isn't enough, and the team's working furiously to beat narrowing odds. We're up against money, and we're up against winter, and we're up against engineering. So we probably got ourselves maybe another, I don't know, 15, 20 days, something like that, in which to go supersonic. If Thrust is the first car to break the sound barrier, Richard Noble will earn a permanent place in history alongside the Campbells. It could be just days away. David Allison, BBC News. Dandy Green, team leader Richard Noble and the Thrust team powered their way into the record books at over 714 miles an hour. The Queen described their achievement as a source of great pride for the nation. And the Prime Ministers also sent a message of congratulation. Two minutes to run. The British team manager, Richard Noble, has spent the last nine years working for this moment. The aim is to reach the intended top speed along a special one-mile section of the desert track where the time will be recorded. As thrust SSC cuts across this dry, barren lake bed, expectations are high, and Andy Green didn't disappoint. Finally, the world land speed record that stood for 14 years has not only been broken, but crushed. The average for the mile... 714 decimal 144 miles an hour. Drive as fast as you want on this surface. Well, as fast as we uh, felt safe to go. <laughs> <laughs> You've been very calm and professional throughout this. Are you just a little bit excited for once? <laughs> of course I'm excited. <laughs> 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 The British team hope the record this car's achieved won't last long. They want to gradually increase it over the next couple of weeks until it reaches the sound barrier of well over 750 miles an hour. Once achieved, it's a record that will stand for some time to come. Clive Myrie, BBC News, in the Nevada desert. Staggering 714 miles an hour. The Queen and the Prime Minister both sent messages of congratulation to the team who raced into the record books last night in Nevada's Black Rock Desert in the United States. <laughs> At last they'd achieved what they'd always said they would. In the space of one hour, Thrust made two successful runs, averaging 714 miles an hour, 81 miles an hour faster than the previous record. Drive as fast as you want to the surface. Well, as fast as... We uh, felt safe to go. Andy, you've been very calm and professional throughout this. Are you just a little bit excited for once? <laughs> of course I'm excited. <laughs> British teams have a good track record in breaking the land speed record. In 1964, Bluebird reached more than 400 miles an hour. The last record was set by Richard Noble 14 years ago. The speed, 633 miles an hour. Today's Thrust SSC has the power of 1,000 family cars. With two Rolls-Royce engines, it's now officially the fastest road vehicle ever built. But that's not the end of it. The team now wants to break the speed of sound, 750 miles an hour. To break the record, they had to do two runs in an hour. On its first run, Thrust SSC topped 700 miles an hour. Less than an hour later, on its return run, it reached 728 miles an hour, an average speed of 714 mph, well over the existing record. For the driver, pilot Andy Green, it was a triumph, even if his enthusiasm didn't exactly show. Are you just a little bit excited for once? <laughs> of course I'm excited. <laughs> uh, how exciting. You can see how excited. We're all absolutely oh, delighted. <laughs> Richard Noble, who built the car, did his best to get the party going. It was his own 14-year-old record that was beaten. In 1983, his Thrust 2 car reached 630 miles an hour. He always thought the right car could go faster. Built here in Southampton, Thrust SSC, twice as long as a bus, has been handmade. Each piece carefully designed, pushing technology to the limit. 
Thrust SSC is half car, half aircraft. It has aluminium wheels nearly three feet high. It's powered by two Rolls-Royce Spey jet engines used on Phantom aircraft. It takes just one minute from start to stop, burning up 300 gallons of paraffin. If the nose starts to lift, special hydraulics raise the tail to force the nose down again. 60 years ago, Sir Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird set a world record of just 300 miles an hour. But is breaking speed records simply a bit of fun, or is there a serious purpose? Engineers say the spin-off from such a technological challenge is useful. A vehicle like Thrust SSC is, of course, incredibly advanced and far away from the average road car of today. But in the future, you, you can't be sure that there won't be little things that uh, trickle down and come into average, everyday involvement. The thrust team is not finished yet. They hope soon to go supersonic, nearly 750 miles an hour. We're up against money and we're up against winter and we're up against engineering. So we probably got ourselves maybe another, I don't know, 15, 20 days, something like that, in which to go supersonic. And then there's the risk. But driver Andy Green says it's less dangerous than climbing Everest. James Wilkinson, BBC News. The car smashed the land speed record last week with an amazing 714 miles an hour. And we wish them all the very best as they push on with their bid to break the sound barrier. When they do, we'll bring you a full report. And finally, the Thrust Supersonic car team out in Nevada has completed an unofficial test run at 750 miles an hour. That's only about 10 miles an hour short of the speed of sound. They think they're now only a day away from shattering that sound barrier. Best of luck to them. Through the sound barrier in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, ITN's Terry Lloyd was there. The British supercar had not been out of the workshops for five days, but now everything seemed perfect, the car and the desert weather. The storms had moved on and the sand had baked dry. Andy Green had already driven thrust SSC to a new world record of 714 miles an hour. On this run, he hoped to go at 785 mph, punching through the sound barrier. Inside the control tower, the driver's girlfriend and teammates appeared anxious as they prepared to count him down. Fifty years ago tomorrow, Chuck Yeager flew supersonic for the first time. Andy Green knew that to bring that record down to earth, he would have to complete a four-second mile to reach his target. As he passed the halfway mark, a sonic bang could be heard. Until today, the thought of man travelling faster than the speed of sound on land had been confined to the realms of science fiction. Now, Andy Green has made that reality and made history. Uh, provisional Mach number on that run was 1.007. Richard Noble, the former world record holder, celebrated as the car prepared for a second supersonic run. Terry Lloyd, News at 10 in the Nevada desert. That's a wonderful achievement for the Thrust team. And that's News at 10 tonight. We're back tomorrow. From the entire team here at ITN, good night. Same car with a run of 764 miles per hour streaking across the sand, faster than the speed of sound. I'm joined now live from the desert by our correspondent, uh, Tom Carver. Um, Tom, uh, what was the point of this? That's a very good question. Uh, the point, I suppose, is to enter the history books because um, no one's ever going to be able to do the same feat, pull off the same trick again. And uh, at the moment, this is still an unofficial timing. But uh, if it is confirmed, then Andy Green will go down as the first man ever to drive a car through the sound barrier on the surface of the Earth. So I guess that's something to uh, live for. Um, now, uh, is, that, is this the end of uh, the, um, 
this uh, performance in the desert? It's not, no. Um, what we had just a few seconds ago before you came to me was another run by the same car uh, in order to try to confirm the land speed record because to do that as opposed to breaking the sound barrier to get the new land speed record they have to do two runs within one hour and I've just been told that uh, this last run was one minute over one hour so it doesn't qualify as a new land speed record but nonetheless he will go down as the man that broke the sound barrier it would appear. Uh, so uh, is there going to be uh, one more run or two more runs? No, there was just one more run just now, um, but as I say, it was one minute outside the hour time limit uh, required, and so therefore they will not be able to qualify for a new land speed record, but he will uh, still be able to claim that he broke the, the sound barrier. But I doubt it's the end of this whole um, Farago because they <laughs> say that they want to take the car up to 800 miles an hour. I, I note you use the word Farago. Well, it is becoming um, uh, uh, quite a scene out here because we've got the American camp as well. They're positioned about half a mile across the desert. These rival camps, they don't talk to each other except to agree on when each other are going to race on the next day because they have to share the track. But I think that this uh, race between these two men, Craig Breedlove, the American man who's broken the record several times over the last four decades, and uh, Richard Noble, who, of course, has broken the record himself and has now set this new record, uh, this uh, rivalry, this intense personal rivalry, I think will go on probably into next year because I'm sure the American won't give up at this stage. He will be back with more money, more cash, more cars in an attempt to uh, better what the Brits have done. Tom, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. the studios of ITN The News with Dennis Tuohy. Good morning. The headlines. Thrust breaks the sound barrier in Nevada but misses the official record. Blair faces loyalist rage over shaking hands with Jerry Adams. And a campaign is launched to stop firework tragedies on bonfire night. Britain's jet supercar Thrust has made history by twice breaking the sound barrier. But the driver, Andy Green, didn't set a new supersonic land speed record because the two runs across the Nevada desert were 61 minutes apart and the international rules allow only an hour. Nonetheless, Tony Blair and William Haig have sent messages to congratulate the Thrust team on going supersonic. From Nevada, Terry Lloyd reports. Champagne celebrations for the world's first supersonic driver. He'd burst through the sound barrier twice, but Andy Green said he hadn't heard or felt anything new. Well, I still know what all the fuss is about. I didn't, I didn't hear anything. But Nevada's Black Rock Desert had shuddered as the British supercar reached 764 miles an hour. A supersonic record set, but the British wanted another world record. They'd broken the sound barrier, but under international rules, their speed would not be officially recognised unless they could make a similar return run within the hour. Andy Green was up against the clock again. The car did go supersonic for a second time, but had the turnaround been fast enough? Timing, uh, can you confirm that run was within the hour, over? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot do that. You missed it by about a minute. No, no. America's Craig Breedlove, who'd hoped to regain the world land speed title, watched and then conceded defeat. Craig, mi mixed emotions for you? Uh, no, I just came to congratulate Richard on, on a job well done, basically. Both racing drivers appreciated this new step for mankind. It's human nature to push back the, the bounds of what is possible, what has been achieved, um, in the same way that uh, people want to, for the first time ever, to climb Everest, to go supersonic in the air, to walk on the moon. Today, for the first time ever, we created a car and made it supersonic. That has never been done before. So we've achieved a world first, something that humankind has never done before. 
From supercar to supersonic, but Thrust SSC won't be heading back home just yet. The British team intends staying in the desert until the money or the good weather runs out in the hope they can set a new supersonic land speed record. They would love to achieve it today, exactly 50 years since the first plane flew supersonic. Terry Lloyd, ITN, in the Nevada desert. Good morning and welcome to the BBC's Breakfast News. Good morning. The main story is the government announces the names of the two people who will lead the war against drugs. The so-called drugs czar and his deputy will coordinate efforts to target dealers, to cure addicts and to make children more aware of the dangers of drugs. The British jet-powered car thrust has broken the sound barrier the first time it has been done on land. And the Queen is continuing her state visit to India. This morning she's in Amritsar, the scene of a massacre by British troops almost 80 years ago. Also in BBC Breakfast News, a crisis summit as America prepares for El Nino. The first signs of the approaching threat, scores of sea lions injured in storms off the California coast. And Michael Fish is here with a look at our weather. 164 miles an hour during the second of three runs in the Nevada desert. But because it didn't make its third, also supersonic run within an hour, it failed, according to the rule book, to set a new land speed record. After days of waiting, finally a clear desert dawn provides the crucial break in the weather to go supersonic. Inside the thrust camp, the engineers make final checks on the 10-ton British car and its two Rolls-Royce jet engines. For driver Andy Green, the days of waiting are over. He spends a final few moments with his girlfriend, Jane Millington, who will give him the signal to go. Ahead lies 13 miles of desert track and a chance of immortality. SSC Rolls. All stations, SSC Rolls. It's exactly 50 years since the sound barrier was first broken in the air, but no one has travelled at the speed of sound on the surface of the earth until now. As he passes, the sonic boom provides the evidence. Thrust speed is 764 miles an hour, faster than the speed of sound. Provisional Mach number on that run was 1.007. Yeah! Yeah! Right, wow. you got it. Yeah, yeah, well, you've seen a supersonic run, a genuine <laughs> supersonic <laughs> run. <laughs> For Richard Noble, Thrust's owner, hitting Mach 1 was a lifetime's ambition. And minutes later, Craig Breedlove, his American rival, came over to congratulate him. The achievement is a considerable testament of British engineering skills, but for driver Andy Green, an RAF pilot, it seemed to be just another day's work. Unlike what I've read in a lot of the newspapers, the car doesn't leap into the air and explode. I was delighted to find out. And it is possible to drive supersonic, and we did it. The thrust team's next goal is to hit 800 miles an hour. After breaking the sound barrier, they now believe anything is possible. Tom Carver, BBC News, in the Black Rock Desert, Nevada. It was the culmination of years of hard work. Millions of pounds had been spent on the project. This made it all worthwhile. A supersonic run timed at 764.168 miles per hour. We've had an enormous amount of problems, obviously, particularly with finance and money, but that just served to make the organization tougher and the uh, success just that more, bit more rewarding. Two huge Rolls-Royce jet engines propelled thrust across the desert sand to put RAF fighter pilot Andy Green into the history books as the first person ever to break the sound barrier on land. Here we've achieved something new in going, creating the world's first supersonic car and actually not just saying we've done it, but actually having it officially approved and timed by the FIA approved timekeepers. The rule book states that to qualify as an official land speed record, two runs must be completed within an hour of each other. Thrust failed to do that by just 60 seconds. The next attempt, later today, will try to break 800 miles an hour as well as the sound barrier in a double supersonic first. David Wade, Sky News.
Doctrine leader Andy Green thrust reached 764 miles an hour during the second of three runs in the Nevada desert. But because it didn't make its third, also supersonic run within an hour, it failed according to the rule book to set a new land speed record. Rolls. It's exactly 50 years since the sound barrier was first broken in the air, but no one has travelled at the speed of sound on the surface of the earth until now. And as he passes, the sonic boom provides the evidence. Truss speed is 764 miles an hour. Provisional Mach number on that run was 1. Point zero zero seven. For Richard Noble, Trust's owner, hitting Mach 1 was a lifetime's ambition. But for driver Andy Green, an RAF pilot, it seemed to be just another day's work. Unlike what I've read in a lot of the newspapers, the car doesn't leap into the air and explode. I was <laughs> delighted to find out. And it is possible to drive supersonic, and we did it. The thrust team's next goal is to hit 800 miles an hour. After breaking the sound barrier, they now believe anything is possible. Tom Carver, BBC News, in the Black Rock Desert, Nevada, order to go supersonic. Inside the thrust camp, the engineers make final checks on the 10-ton British car and its two Rolls-Royce jet engines. For driver Andy Green, the days of waiting are over. He spends a final few moments with his girlfriend, Jane Millington, who will give him the signal to go. Ahead lies 13 miles of desert track and a chance of immortality. SSC rolling. All stations, SSC rolls. It's exactly 50 years since the sound barrier was first broken in the air, but no one has travelled at the speed of sound on the surface of the earth until now. As he passes, the sonic boom provides the evidence. Thrust speed is 764 miles an hour, faster than the speed of sound. Provisional Mach number on that run was 1.007. Right, you got it. Yeah, well, you've seen a supersonic run, a genuine <laughs> supersonic <laughs> run. For Richard Noble, Thrust's owner, hitting oh, Mach 1 was a lifetime's okay, ambition. And minutes later, Craig Breedlove, his American rival, came over to congratulate him. The achievement is a considerable testament of British engineering skills, but for driver Andy Green, an RAF pilot, it seemed to be just another day's work. Unlike what I've read in a lot of the newspapers, the car doesn't leap into the air and explode. I was delighted to find out. And it is possible to drive supersonic, and we did it. The thrust team's next goal is to hit 800 miles an hour. After breaking the sound barrier, they now believe anything is possible. Tom Carver, BBC News, in the Black Rock Desert, Nevada. All stations, SSC rolls. No one knew what would happen once the car went faster than sound. It was genuinely a trip into the unknown. On the Nevada desert, only those close by heard the sonic boom as, for the first time ever, a car went through the sound barrier. Owner Richard Noble heard the news from the official timekeeper. Provisional Mach number on that run was 1.007. When the car is driven subsonically, it compresses the air in front of it. As it approaches 750 miles an hour, a wall or barrier of compressed air forms in front of it. At the speed of sound, the air parts suddenly, causing a shock wave and a sonic boom. A second shock wave comes from the tail as the air closes after the car has passed. Thrust's success was well timed. Fifty years ago to the day, this aircraft, piloted by Chuck Yeager, dropped from the belly of a B-29 to break the sound barrier in an aircraft for the first time. Jaeger became a folk hero, the aircraft a museum piece. That led 20 years ago to Concorde and supersonic passenger travel. But spectacular as it is, Thrust's success is unlikely to lead to much. In terms of ground transport, it's much more difficult to see what the immediate relevance of this work can be. Um, it's very difficult to see cars travelling at a marked number of one around the M25. Useful or not, driver Andy Green now goes into the history books. 
unlike what I've read in a lot of the newspapers, the car doesn't leap into the air and explode. I was delighted to find out. And it is possible to drive supersonic, and we did it. But they haven't finished yet. The next goal, to take the land speed record officially above the speed of sound. James Wilkinson, BBC News. Poor MPH in Nevada's Black Rock Desert. But it's not an official record because the team failed by seconds to repeat a required second supersonic run in one hour. Britain's Prime Minister, Tony Blair, congratulated the Thrust team on its achievement. Well, it's a tremendous British achievement. Uh, the whole country is proud of them. And what I would say to them, I think, is well done. You've done brilliantly. And it's, it's a great day for the whole of the country. And I think it's a tremendous achievement. Tony Blair. Speed of Sound's a big talking point today because the American pilot Chuck Yeager is set to reenact the first flight ever to break the sound barrier. Known as the flight that was heard around the world, it took place 50 years ago today. He'll repeat his historic flight in front of hundreds of spectators in the California desert, but this time in a modern F-15 fighter. On October the 14th, 1947, Chuck Yeager, then an ace combat pilot, was testing a rocket-powered research plane, the X-1, when he pushed the craft past the sound barrier for the first time. Yeager epitomized a new breed of crack pilots who risked and often lost their lives flying a variety of experimental craft. Yeager went on to train a generation of young pilots. Now a stamp's being issued to commemorate that first flight. You have to be dead 10 years before they'll name a stamp after you, but the X-1 is an airplane, uh, so they're honoring the airplane. If you, but if you look in the cockpit real close, you'll see my nose sticking out. At 74 years old, these days, Jaeger is still in the cockpit. We're accelerating uh, pretty rapidly. We just got a mock jump right now. Just 50 years ago, it was a hell of a lot harder. Nowadays, flying interferes with Jaeger's fishing, and he says he might have to cut back. Alan King, Sky News. A British team has established a supersonic land speed record in the Nevada desert. The RAF pilot Andy Green, driving the thrust supersonic car, broke the sound barrier on Monday. Today, he completed two runs necessary to establish the record within the one hour permitted by the rules. From Washington, Tom Carver. Squadron leader Andy Green set off down the desert track he's got to know so well to attempt what just eluded him two days before. Two runs faster than sound within one hour. The cooler temperatures of early morning slowed down the speed of sound and allowed him to smash the barrier with ease. The engineers managed to prepare thrust for the second run inside the time allowed, and Andy Green headed back down the track, breaking the sound barrier once more. The provisional Mach number on the return run 1.020. Since they arrived here in the desert, the thrust team have added more than 100 miles an hour to the land speed record, and in doing so have taken it supersonic. But it won't take long before someone else tries to better it. Tom Carver, BBC News. The thrust supercar went faster than sound again this evening, twice. And this time it completed the two runs within an hour. It means the British team have a new supersonic world land speed record to their names. The Prime Minister sent his congratulations. ITN's Terry Lloyd reports from the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. The British supercar had already gone supersonic, but there was still one new record to set. Under international rules, the car had to make two runs through the sound barrier within an hour to make its speed official. This time, Thrust's crew made the turnaround with six minutes to spare. It was all down to the final drive and the timekeeper's confirmation. Provisional Mach number on the return run, 1.020. So it's confirmed and official, okay, Andy Green well. and Thrust SSC have just set the first ever supersonic land speed record.
Congratulations for Andy Green, whose average speed over a measured mile was clocked at 763 miles an hour. Very, very pleased. Uh, you know, it's a triumph of British engineering to build the, the world's first supersonic car, bring the team here 5,000 miles from home. We've had a fantastic amount of help from the people in Nevada, but it was nonetheless a huge struggle over three years, and particularly the last six weeks of operating out here in the desert. The fastest man on Earth will return home to fly fighter aircraft. The supersonic car will go at a more leisurely pace, appearing as the star attraction at motor rallies and shows around the world. Terry Lloyd, News at 10 in the Nevada desert. Seven hundred and sixty six miles an hour. That's how fast Andy Green went last week in Thrust SSC. The world watched in awe as he went supersonic and then some. But what you haven't seen until now is the exclusive nail biting behind the scenes story. Craig Doyle reports from the heart of the Thrust camp and we pick him up just as they gear up for their first crack at the speed of sound. It's the sixth week of the Thrust SSC campaign here in the desert. The car and the team are as ready as they're ever going to be. It's already broken a land speed record with a speed of 714 miles per hour. But if the truth be told, that's not what the team are here for. They want this car to go faster than the speed of sound. Unfortunately, there's only one thing stopping them, the weather. It's unpredictable and unforgiving. The wind can be violent, whipping up sandstorms, often making it impossible to see five feet in front of you. And the rain, which plans to turn this dried up lake bed back into a lake, has arrived. As those of you on the plan will have seen, uh, the wind has not been kind to us this morning, continues to rise steadily. Okay. We've therefore declared a weather hold. Yes, uh, like we will now <laughs> delay any... And the rain means even the man who's driving the fastest car on earth, Andy Green, has to do some sweeping much to the delight of his girlfriend, Jane Millington. Pretty handy around the house, drives quite quickly, but no one's perfect. <laughs> and the mud's not just a problem for feet. So the speed we want to achieve, we've got to have absolutely perfect conditions. And uh, with damp patches, there's a risk that maybe one front wheel would get in a softer patch than the other wheel, and uh, that would give a steering input. Uh, we can do without that type of thing at 750 miles an hour. Out there. So, yeah. inch and a half, two inches down. Yeah. But tomorrow, we're going to have to get on with it. Time's running out, weather's well, running out, money's running out, everything's running yeah. out. Yeah, we need to press ourselves. People are running out. Yeah. We've got tomorrow. Mm. Dateline, Monday the 13th of October. The team wake up to a spectacular morning. It's time for this beast to do the business. Two supersonic runs in an hour. The world's media thunder into position, desperate to see a car go supersonic for the first time ever. Nobody really knows what will happen. Well, the first sign will be a sonic boom. The standard speed of sound is around 750 miles per hour, although it gets faster in hot weather. When a car travels normally, the sound waves move in all directions. But if it starts to catch up with the speed of sound, the sound waves have nowhere to go, and they'll start to squash up, forming a cone, which will trail back behind the car. Then, after the car's gone past you, all that compressed sound hits you at once. Bang! Stationary, 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 SSC is rolling. But now it's time to put the theory to the ultimate test. Words cannot describe what that felt like as he went by at such a high speed. It was a massive boom. I don't know if you can feel it on television, but absolutely incredible. It's the most amazing thing I've ever, ever seen in my life. It's just incredible. We don't know what the speed is, but that must be very, very close to supersonic. Absolutely incredible. The mile was 764. 764 miles per hour, definitely supersonic, a world's first. But unfortunately, the speed barrier wasn't the only thing they'd broken. Did you find it? We found it. It appears to be burned. It's burnt off. The extra heat generated had melted the parachutes. They didn't open, so the car couldn't slow down. Andy had overshot by a mile and a half. Bad news, as they had an hour to complete two runs for the record, and already 17 vital minutes were lost towing the car back. Two minutes to roll. My heart was in my mouth with the tension. Goodness knows how Andy felt. Yes! Unfortunately, their joy was short-lived. We got the data. 
Original Mach number yeah. 1.003. Can, can you confirm whether it's inside the time? So no, I cannot. You've missed it by about a minute. Unbelievable. They'd missed it by just 50 seconds, despite an incredible performance by the turnaround team. Yeah, it's a shame. Good effort there, Andy. Well, we came close. They went supersonic. But their aim was to set a record, and they didn't do it. Yet again, the celebrations were put on hold. Two days later, holding their breath, they go for another record attempt. This could be their last chance. Fantastic, an incredible double sonic boom, caught here exclusively by our camera crew, who were only 500 meters away. The booms came from both the nose and the tail. That was 759 miles per hour, and this time there were no hitches. Now, the team could only wait for the return run. Well within the hour, the return run hit 766 miles per hour, a new supersonic land speed record. Yeah, we did it! With no government help, little sponsorship, and a real lack of funds, they'd made history. <laughs> For Richard Noble, they said it couldn't be done, but... You bloody done it. <laughs> after 10 hard years, finally, a dream realized.